If you have been watching my streams, you know that I've been playing tons of Journey of the Prairie King and I just wanted to beat the game. But there is a hidden achievement in the game that you can only get if you beat the entire game without dying once. I'm going to be honest, beating the game is already hard. Beating it without dying feels impossible. But there is a magic trick that you could do that will allow anyone to beat that level. But first, let's go over some key tips and tricks for Journey of the Prairie King. Alright, let's get started with the most important thing in the game, coins. As you defeat enemies, they will drop coins and you will need each and every single coin that you can find. And that is because these coins are used to buy permanent upgrades for your little character. You will find random power-ups in this game that will seriously help you out in tough situations. But those power-ups are only temporary, buffs bought with coins are permanent. There are three types of buffs in the game that you can buy with coins. First, you can buy boots. Boots will simply just increase your movement speed and is probably the least important upgrade. Then we have the gun buff. The gun buff will increase the attack speed of your weapon. This is a really good upgrade and will help you out quite a bit. But the third buff is probably the most important one for the later stages of the game. This is the ammo buff and it will increase the damage of each bullet. Each time you purchase a buff, there will be a stronger version of it that costs more and buffs you even more. It is very, very important that you get the second ammo buff before the third area. There are horrible enemies there and if you have the second ammo buff, you will one shot them. So yeah, focus on getting as many coins as you can because you will need it. It is actually a really good idea to keep resetting the first level in the game until you have at least 8 to 12 coins. If you do that, you will just be setting yourself up for success. Now onto power-ups. Power-ups are crucial when you are in a tight spot. Enemies will drop random power-ups after you have defeated them and you can simply walk into them to pick them up. You can only hold a single power-up at a time and you can activate the power-up by simply hitting spacebar. But if you pick up a power-up while you already have one, the power-up you picked up will be automatically activated. This is very important to note as not all power-ups are made equal. Some are just much better than others. Coffee will greatly increase your movement speed for 16 seconds. The heavy machine gun power-up will increase your attack speed for 12 seconds. The screen nuke power-up will defeat every enemy on the screen, but this power-up also has a huge drawback. Enemies defeated using the nuke power-up will not drop any gold or power-ups, so use it sparingly. The shotgun power-up will cause your bullets to shoot in a spread. It is quite helpful but it does slightly reduce your attack speed. It is so good for those tight situations. The smoke bomb will cause all enemies to be stunned and will teleport you to a random spot on the map. The tombstone will turn you into a zombie for 8 seconds. During this time, you are invincible and enemies will run away from you and if you touch them, they will die instead of you. The wagon wheel power-up will cause your player to fire in 8 directions for 8 seconds. And finally, we have the Sheriff's Badge. This is the best power-up in the game. It will basically give you the shotgun, the machine gun and the coffee upgrade all at the same time and it lasts for 24 seconds. It's just really good. Okay, so about power-ups. It is usually a good idea to use a bad power-up just before you pick up a really good one. That way, you could use the good one when you really need it. Holding on to the Sheriff's badge is probably the best piece of advice I can give you. Nothing hurts more than holding coffee in your power-up bar and walking over a sheriff's badge just as the round is about to end. Okay, so now that you're an expert on all of the power-ups and the best use for gold, how do you actually defeat the enemies? Well, to be honest, it takes a little bit of practice. Remember, your character can shoot in 8 different directions. Shooting diagonally is really important and will help you out a ton. So get used to shooting at an angle and moving your character so that the bullets almost have a spray effect. 
always focus on flying enemies first. They just seem to move much faster and they cannot be blocked by the other enemies. If you see butterflies or these imps, they should be your main focus. After them, focus on enemies that move faster. These ogres are a little bit tanky, but these mushrooms move much, much faster. So focus on them. The ogres are easier to kite. Next, take care when a power up spawns close to an enemy spawning zone. It is pretty easy to go for a power up or some gold and an enemy immediately comes out and hits you. Always shoot into the spawning point before going for the item. And guys, this is really important. Your luck has absolutely no effect in this game. It is quite unfortunate, but yeah, luck does not matter. The first two bosses in this game are identical. And luckily for us, this boss is actually really easy to defeat. Now, I know he follows some pattern and you can heavily abuse it with some crazy risky moves. And yes, doing that will allow you to defeat the boss really quickly. However, I'm not about that. I just don't want to risk it. So I opt for the strategy that you are seeing now. I only hit him when it is absolutely safe to hit him. And yeah, it takes longer to defeat him, but it just works. It just works. The last boss is really hard. He really is. He shoots many bullets at you in all directions. The bullets travel extremely fast and the bullets blend in with your own bullets and it gets hard to differentiate between them. But this boss is also really easy. Just make sure that you start this boss fight with either the sheriff's power up or with the machine gun power up. You can beat this boss without these, but they make it effortless. Then as soon as the fight starts, stand right over here. Since the boss starts firing their shots from the right, you can hit them from this exact spot while completely avoiding damage. It just works. Okay, so now you know everything you need to play and beat the game. But the game is hard and it's almost too hard. Luckily, I have a sneaky little trick that will let you beat the entire game without dying. And yes, some people will say that getting the achievement this way is not honorable. But as Concerned Ape would put it, so anyway, this is what you do. Beat the first round in the game with as much gold as you can and without dying. As soon as you arrive on the second round, hit the escape key. This will kick you out of the game. But don't worry, if you click on the arcade machine, you will see that you can continue from your previous game. But don't continue. Instead, head over to your bed and sleep. Then on the next day, go back to the arcade machine and click continue game. If you take any damage, hit a escape to quit the game and then quit the entire game and reload back in. If you do this, your death will not count. So you could beat each level one at a time without taking any damage and then leave the mini game and save your progress. Each time you take damage, reset and start again on the same level as if you never took damage. This works, I did it, I beat each level in the game one at a time and saved my progress each time. And I beat the final boss. And technically, I did it without taking any damage. And yes, I got the achievement. And you know what? You can do it too. You can get the rarest achievement in the game with some persistence and patience. So what are you waiting for? Go get that achievement.